Welcome back. This is Project 4L60E, Part 2, Lesson 6. Lesson 5 was pretty long, but we finally assembled and tested a light new input drum. In this lesson, we'll move on to the reverse input drum and the front pump. You'll need these tools from past lessons plus a flashlight and two blocks of wood. Set the drum aside for now. Get the reverse input drum. Begin disassembly by removing this snap ring. Lift out the clutch pack. It consists of an end plate, four friction plates, and four flat steel plates. Turn them over and set them down as removed. Remove the Belleville spring. This is a type of spring steel plate you haven't encountered before in this transmission. When the vehicle is placed in reverse, this plate flattens to prevent a harsh engagement. Note that it's installed with the outer edge pointing down. Turn it over and set it down. Get the spring compressor and blocks of wood. Arrange the blocks like this and set the drum like so. Bring the threaded rod part up from underneath. Install the U-piece and wing nut. Compress the return spring cage. Remove the snap ring. Set the snap ring and cage aside. Pull the aluminum piston out. Set it aside. Now we can inspect the drum. During the introduction to this project, I mentioned deliberately placing problems in the transmission in order to discuss them. I've done so with this reverse input housing. The drum which actually came in this transmission was in good condition, so I substituted this bad one to demonstrate what you could encounter. Just from the color of the metal, you can suspect heat damage, but we can check it. Place anything handy with a straight edge across this surface to make sure it's flat. By using a light, we can see that this drum is ruined and will have to be replaced. Intense heat caused by a slipping band has warped and dished out the surface. Installing a new band around a damaged drum is not an acceptable repair. We need a new drum. Get the new one. This drum is actually a remanufactured part which starts out as a straight core. The band surface comes micro-polished and new bushings have been installed. Let's assemble the clutch. Remove the old lip seals from the piston. Get the reverse input drum sub kit.
install the seals. Lightly lubricate the bore and piston. Place it in the drum and use a feeler gauge to help guide the seals in. Install the spring cage and snap ring. Install the Belleville cushion like so with the outer edge pointing down. Get the new reverse input frictions and steels. Pre-soak them. Install a flat steel. Notice that our old and new steels are the turbulator type with oval holes for better fuel economy. The steels can be either 78 thousandths or 90 thousandths thick depending on model and year. The most common, like this one, is 78 thousandths. Place a friction in. Install the other plates. Make sure the end plate is flat and place it in. Replace this snap ring.
end play should be somewhat loose between 40 thousandths and 75 thousandths. Set the assembly aside. Let's work on the pump. Set this thrust washer aside. Turn it over with the front seal up. Remove the seal retainer by prying up on these four tabs. Set it aside. Pinch the pump to case o-ring together and remove it. Turn the pump over. Use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the five cover to body bolts. Separate it in two. This half of the pump with the stator support is called the cover. The other half with the pump rotor and vanes is called the body. We'll work on the body first. Set the cover aside. Remove this guide ring and set it aside. Pull out the rotor and vanes. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses and use a screwdriver to pry in this area to lift out the slide springs. Pry only against the steel pump slide and not any of the aluminum. Cover with a shop towel as you pry. Set the springs aside. Notice how the pump slide pivots on this pin. Remove it. Move the slide like this and notice these two parts. The square brown part is the seal and the black round piece is the support. Lift the slide up and out. Turn it over and set it down. Get these two parts and set them next to the pin. Get this O-ring and steel ring and set them in the groove on the slide. Use a mechanics pick and pull out a small coil spring from the pivot pin bore. We need to drive the old pump seal and bushing out with a screwdriver and hammer. Move to another work area so you won't disturb these parts. Support one side of the body with wood and collapse the front seal. Hit only the seal and try not to nick the aluminum.
turn it over, and knock it out. Turn it back over and drive the bushing out. Notice the lip in the bushing bore. The new one has to be installed from the other side. After the body is clean, inspect this surface for any gouging or steps from wear. It should only have slight witness marks like you see here. It's not uncommon to find the pump rotor shattered and this area badly damaged. If this is your case, I suggest purchasing a new pump. Ours is okay, so we'll continue. Get the new bushing and the driver. If you don't have this tool, use the valve I mentioned in an earlier lesson. Drive it in just to the lip. It's a good idea at this point to check the fit on the torque converter hub. Check to make sure it turns freely. If it's tight, tap it with a block of wood until it loosens up. Set it back on the bench. Get the front seal. When installing this seal, make sure the body is sitting flat and completely supported underneath. The seal should be driven in evenly with a tool like this or something wide and flat. You should be able to substitute a block of wood or a tool like this. Make sure it straddles the entire flange. Drive it in. The flange should be flush with the body. Let's go back to the bench. The pump slide goes in next. Get the sub kit from the overhaul package. It's labeled servo and pump. Put fluid in this area. Get the O-ring, put fluid on it.
place it in the slide. Put the slide ring on top of it. Hold it like this and set it in the body. Put the round support and square shaped seal in like so. Compress them with the slide and align the pivot pin hole. Place the short spring in. Put the pin in. The slide should pivot like this and be almost flush with the body. Get the slide springs. There are two, one inside the other. Make sure you are wearing safety glasses Place the springs into their pocket against the aluminum. Use a very thick feeler gauge and pry them in. Put some fluid in the vein area. Set a vein ring in. Put fluid on the rotor. Align the tabs of the vein guide and rotor notches and put them together. Set them in. Set the other vein ring in. Install the 13 veins. Finally, add a little more fluid onto the veins. Make sure the rotor and veins turn easily. 
At this point, the body section of the pump is finished, so let's pause the pump assembly for now and conclude lesson six. In lesson seven, we'll work on the cover half, put the pump together, test fit it to the input drums, and install these assemblies into the case.